for other existing cultivars that could be allergy friendly. Um, we have tested 78 cultivars or advanced breeding lines by the skin pick test. And they were tested on 30 individuals. The best three were selected for oral provocations. And out of that came a cultivar that is even better than Santana. Better in the sense that less people with allergic responses. It has a longer storability, not very much longer, but I think for one or two months. It has a quite different taste. The first strategy could be personalized diagnosis. In Apple, four different allergens are recognized. And uh, you can see them. It's very simple. We call them just one, two, three, and four in the order that they were discovered. And we can now uh, forget the scientific names or the biological function for this moment. Just to say that this one is cross-reactive with purge, and that one is cross-reactive with purge. That is why 70% of the people that suffer from hay, from hay fever or from birch pollen uh, allergy also suffer from apple allergy. But each of those four classes of proteins is represented in an apple by many variants. So we have to know which variants do exist and the ones that are relevant. And we try to find answers by genetic approaches. And there is some knowledge about that, but not too much. I here visit some of the only one genes. And here, when they occur in food letters, you know, if they drag that they are not expressing foods, as far as we know. <coughs> we don't mean for many, we don't know whether they express this in the pulp or in the peel. So we only have a few indications. But the few indications we have are very interesting. Look, for instance, with this one, Maldi 104. It is said to be in the pulp, and not in the peel, and not in the pulp. That's great. If you suffer from that one, you just steal your apple, and you can eat. So you have to be aware that peeling might reduce the risk and the consequence. So I think that is very helpful to have on the site. So our knowledge is still a shortage for a lot of genes we don't know whether they're expressed in the pulp or in the peel or in the corn. And uh, Isaac Group developed critical tools to assess this. Namely, the University of Bologna has developed, for each of the Model 1 genes, they have developed a pair of primers which they amplify only that specific gene. And that means that from now on we can do RT PCR research, we can do that means you can uh, follow the expression of those genes in fruit. We can assess whether genes are expressed or not. And that is done by a student, uh, Julia Pagliarani, in the supervision of Stefan, Stefano Tatarini. Another way to see whether uh, which variants are relevant could be uh, correlation studies. We call them genetic QTM mapping studies. In segregating pan populations. We have a cross between Prima and Fiesta, and from that cross there are 90 children, 90 offspring, and we test those that offspring on 20 individuals. So each of those participants on their back caught 90 pricks. Luckily, not in one time, because they would not survive, they would become crazy, so we did it in three patches of third. And now we have to see whether the responses which were measured correlate somehow with the genetic constitution of those apples. And uh, here I give two examples. This is individual 1109. And over here is the strength of the SVT response, the skin pick test response. It is as a percentage to pure histamine. And over here you see the number of individuals that are in that class. And you see quite a wide distribution. And if you do then a correlation study between all those 90 apples, you see why and the genetic constitution, it shows that 
there's a correlation with Lincoln Group 16. So that is Fiesta, the F for Fiesta, one of the parents is 16, is the 16th chromosome. And over there there's a peak, and it's very likely it's above the threshold that there is something associated with allergy. And that's exactly the position of the Molly 1 gene cluster of Lingus Group 60. So probably for this person, Molly 1 is an important allergen. But if you go to that person, you see the profile is different, the shapes a little bit different. And if you do uh, the same type of analysis, it's a lot around the thresh significant threshold, there's a Molly 2 gene. So those two persons, they differ in the allergen to which they are allergic. And uh, I think that is very important to realize if you would do a therapy by taking the allergen. Uh, I don't, can't get the word now, but there's a medical treatment that, if they, you, you, that you are forced in a low dosage to eat an allergen, and then at a certain moment you can stand it. So if they say you are allergic to apple, and say, oh, that's Molly 1, we give you Molly 1 as a treatment, and then in half a year you have overcome. And this person is sensitive to Molly 2. Do not have anything. This distinguishment is not mentioned. <coughs> and you see here another person, and that's likely to be allergic to diff two different variants of Molly 2, as of a variant of Molly 4. So, allergens other than Molly 1 can be important. And individuals differ for the allergens to which they are allergic. An individual can be allergic to a single protein or to several proteins. So, personalized diagnosis would be very useful. And that is also now for clinical tests, you can say, hey, if I have an auto allergy, you say, hey, you have to go to malicious, take a bite. Yeah, but gold malicious is al al allergic, allergenic to many people, but not to all. So if you say, if you base everything on gold malicious, you probably come to wrong conclusions for a lot of people. We cannot see that for ourselves from these results. 